Kenichi is just a shy teenager who gets bullied, but his life suddenly changes when he meets a girl. Mew led him to the Ryozanpaka Martial Arts Dojo. So, he began learning martial arts from six powerful and eccentric masters. Every day, Kenichi had to train as if he were in hell, because they were all martial arts masters in six different disciplines. While Kenichi was the unluckiest disciple here, thanks to that, Kenichi was able to defeat the bullies who used to torment him. Unexpectedly, he kept getting into trouble with the Ragnarok gang, because they were the most powerful gang in the city. So, Kenichi ended up forming his own gang by himself, and, together with his friends, they defeated them, but before that, Kenichi was just a shy teenager. One day, running late for school, he accidentally bumps into a girl wearing glasses. This incident causes Kenichi to be late for class, it turns out her name is Mew, a new classmate of his, while both are being punished standing in the hallway. Mew suggests becoming friends with Kenichi, much to his disbelief, in the second period, Kenichi is late again. Suddenly, he encounters Nijima, a guy who enjoys teasing Kenichi, because Kenichi is known for being timid and incapable of anything. When Kenichi attends the karate class, he's considered a sandbag, even in the afternoon, they would still say, you should think about studying because you're too weak, if I were stronger, would I be allowed to stay and study? He immediately grabs his neck, next week, you and I will have a match, the loser has to leave the karate club, when he returns, he is determined to be stronger, suddenly, he sees Mew protecting an old man, make him afraid, while Mew tells these troublemakers to apologize, saying that the weak ones don't just know how to run away, Kenichi realizes he shouldn't avoid it anymore, so, he rushes forward to punch him, when they were about to deal with Kenichi, Mew immediately uses martial arts to defeat them, this surprises him because Mew is very strong, at this point, Mew asked Kenichi, do you want to learn martial arts? So she directs him to a martial arts school, suddenly, an old man with six-pack abs appears, making the young man scared to dead. When he found out that Mew had introduced him here, the man immediately led him to the martial arts school, unexpectedly, inside were all violent and eccentric people, making him faint, not understanding what kind of bizarre martial arts dojo this was. When he regained consciousness, he saw Mew, it turns out this is her home, this uncle is the 100th degree karate master named Saka Ki, a Muay Thai and boxing martial artist named Apachai, an old Chinese martial arts master named Ma Kensei, a Jujutsu master named Akisame, and a girl skilled in weapons named Shigu Ri. Surprisingly, the head of this martial arts dojo, Ryozan Paku, it turns out he is Mu's grandfather, making Kenichi anxious, because this martial arts dojo is too terrifying, but because he wants to become stronger, he agrees to enroll here, when he learns that training here might lead to an early death, the young man immediately wants to turn back. So, Akisame grabs him and makes him stand in a horse stance, and also had to make him go jogging. In the first training session, he feels like he's in hell, when he's about to give up, Mew tells him to keep trying tomorrow. So, the next morning, Kenichi comes back, in the evening, Mew accidentally finds out that Kenichi is about to have a fight, thus, that night, she guides him on some defensive techniques, but Kenichi doesn't want to attack a girl. So, Mew tells him to try touching her chest. The young man immediately rushes forward, but he doesn't even touch a strand of Mew's hair. The next morning, after arriving at school, Kenichi continues training. Finally, his match arrives. Although his legs are still wobbly, thanks to training with Mew, he manages to avoid his opponent. Surprisingly, his punch doesn't have any effect. Unsure of what to do, he remembers the throw that Mew used on him. So Kenichi wins the match, suddenly, Nijima begins to show more respect to Kenichi, and even the referee, Sakuba, wants to fight him, the next morning, Mew sees Kenichi looking dejected, Mew asked, do you want to join the karate or judo club? He replies, I want to join the gardening club, immediately shocking Mew, suddenly, Nijima appears, introducing himself as his close friend, meanwhile, Sakuba is causing a commotion in class, even the teacher is scared of him, at this point, he only wants to fight Kenichi. While Kenichi is still worried, he continues to go to the martial arts school for training. When he sees Apachai warming up, he immediately ran away. The next morning, as Kenichi is about to sneak away, he encounters Sakuba. So, he was forced by him to fight, but Kenichi still refuses to fight him. Suddenly, he attacks Kenichi. This leads to Kenichi being beaten again and scolded as worthless. By evening, he still can't accept this humiliation because he was defeated so easily, so, he wants to become even stronger, seeing Kenichi's determination, they all take him for training, at this point, 
Akisame has him wrestle with a stone statue. While Kanichi finds it too heavy, to Akisame, it's just his toy, as for Ma Kensei, he taught him the head spinning technique, when it's Apachai and Shiguri's turn, Kanichi runs away, because he doesn't know what holding back means, despite promising not to hit Kanichi, the young man still can't resist punching him, so, every day, Kanichi trains with them, suddenly, Sakaki said, don't you recognize anything? It turns out Akisame replaces him with a larger statue every day. Finally, it's Sasaki's turn to teach him karate. On the other hand, Sakuba was still bullying others. This made Mew annoyed and determined to confront him. Suddenly, Kanichi arrives, not allowing him to harm his crush. Thanks to remembering what Saka Ki taught him, Kanichi hits him accurately, making him angry. He continues to fight. Surprisingly, Kanichi wins, making him very happy with the results of his training. On the other side, there was a gang that heard that Kanichi had defeated their underlings. Suddenly, Nijima spreads the rumor throughout the school that Kanichi is unbeatable. So, he immediately stopped him. Just as a group of people appears looking for Kanichi, Nijima explains that they are the Ragnarok gang, focusing on the strongest. They are hunting Kanichi. This made Kanichi fearful, and he quickly looked for a hiding place. So, he returns to the gardening club. There, he encounters Izumi, the tree planting club president. Meanwhile, Nijima continued to persuade Kanichi to fight them. Back at the martial arts school, Kanichi continues to face challenges from Apachai. Seeing the young man losing his will, Sasaki advises that the only thing not betraying him is training. Despite that, Kanichi still doesn't want to train for the purpose of fighting. So, the martial arts masters tell him, if he trains well, he can go on a date with Mew at the end of the month. This excites the young man, motivating him to train. Consequently, he gets to go on a date with Mew. Kanichi realizes that Mew has to stay at home doing housework every day, so, he decides to take her out for a really fun day. Suddenly, they both discover that Nijima is being beaten up, because he refuses to reveal where Kanichi is. Kanichi tells them to stop, even though his legs are still shaking, surprisingly, he easily defeats all of them. When he got home, he realized that his masters had actually instructed those gang members to find him. At this moment, the principal said that he, too, had been bullied in the past, but the bullies who targeted him were all beaten by him. The next morning, Kanichi asks his family for permission to train more regularly at the martial arts school. Although his father and sister disagree, thinking that their son has been lose his mind, his father decides to go there to check it out. But then he was knocked out by his mother, and his mother asked his little sister to bring him a packed meal. At this point, Akisame asked Mew to help him practice doing the splits. Despite the pain, the young man feels Mew's chest touching him, Unexpectedly, Hanoka rushes in, thinking her brother is being attacked, she realized that the big boobs girl was harming Kanichi, however, she finds this place too terrifying, so she quickly delivers the food and runs away, now it's Apachai's turn to train Kanichi, in the evening, when they all sit down to eat, Kanichi was immediately deprived of all his food, this leaves the young man starving, on the other side, the Ragnarok gang is still searching for Kanichi, meanwhile, Nijima has gathered all the information about them. The next morning, seeing Kanichi is too weak, Saka Ki immediately demonstrates for him, punching through the wall. Meanwhile, Mew can throw six punches in one second. Saka Ki says Kanichi needs to master both of these skills. After finishing karate, Kanichi continues to learn kung fu, and he is told to walk around while practicing, making everyone think he's crazy. Mew joins him in training, explaining that this method will sharpen his punches. Suddenly, they are surrounded by the Ragnarok gang. As they are about to attack Mew, Saka Ki, who happened to be passing by, intervenes. Surprisingly, he only adjusts Kanichi's posture and leaves. So, he immediately kicked him. Unexpectedly, he fell and couldn't stand up again. As for Mew, she just finished dealing with this bunch, making him think she's a monster. He immediately ran away. At this point, he returned to report to the leader named Kasara, making her feel very amused. At this moment, Kanichi is worried that someone else will come looking for him. Unexpectedly, he discovered that Izumi had been captured by this group. They even destroyed his flowerpot. This made Kanichi angry, and he immediately dealt with him, causing Izumi to be infatuated with him. At this point, Kanichi continues to be harassed by the Ragnarok gang. Seeing punches ineffective against Kanichi, they pulled out a knife, making the guy scared and his legs trembling. Fortunately, Mew arrived in time to help him. So, when he returned to the martial arts hall, he immediately fell into depression, wondering if anyone could teach him how to use weapons, almost getting struck by Shiguri's attack. 
Akisame said that she is a master of weapons, realizing that using a knife was too dangerous, so, Mew immediately handed her a spoon, surprisingly, she could also cut both of their clothes with it, thus, the principal immediately changed it back to a roll of paper, however, he still got beaten up by Shigu Ri. The principal said that what he lacked was the courage to face weapons, at this point, Kanichi had to run with Akisame, suddenly, he encountered Izumi's group being bullied, so, Kanichi decided to stop them, as soon as Akisame touched his hand lightly, he immediately broke his arm, so, he called a tall, muscular person to step forward, taking advantage of this moment, he said that he would teach him jujutsu, when facing someone with strength, you can use techniques to defeat them, suddenly, that guy pulled out a gun, but Akisame wasn't afraid, he immediately led him into an alley for a private conversation, by the evening, when Kanichi was heading home, he encountered the guy with a knife again, this time, he was no longer afraid and taught him a lesson, the next day, Apachai was training on how to be lenient to help train Kanichi. Luckily, there was still one statue that hadn't been destroyed. At school, these three guys were still looking for Kanichi. Because it was time for a break, he had managed to escape. Suddenly, Nijima came to tell him, they have one fighter who practices wrestling and another who practices boxing. This made Kanichi scared, so he ran back to the martial arts dojo. Realizing that the one looking for him is a boxer, so, he asked Apachai to teach him martial arts, that's when Kanichi began training with him, he thought that this time Apachai had learned to be lenient, but unexpectedly, he still knocked him out, almost to the point of losing consciousness, when Kanichi arrived at school, he saw a piece of paper, stating that two of his friends had been kidnapped, Kanichi realized that those two were the ones who usually bullied him, despite that, he still went to rescue them, seeing his prey approach, so, this Yukita guy thought he would deal with him quickly, when he charged, Kanichi immediately defeated him, recognizing that his comrades were defeated, so, Takeda drew a fighting arena, because he is a professional boxer, unexpectedly, his punches were too fast, easily knocking down Kanichi, no matter how he fought, Kanichi couldn't land a punch on him, so, he was knocked out by him again, suddenly, he remembered that the principal had mentioned that a boxer's weakness was in their legs, so Kanichi immediately attacked his legs, causing him to start feeling pain, and realizing that Kanichi didn't just learn karate, when he was about to knock him out, the bell of the clock rang to signal the end of the round, so, he stopped his attack, while he laughed and called Kanichi foolish, Takeda realized that Kanichi is very strong, at this point, he wondered why Takeda gave up boxing, so, Takeda told him the story, he used to be a professional fighter, but because of saving a friend, he was hit in the hand with an iron rod, resulting in Takeda being unable to use his left hand anymore, his friend, however, looked down on Takeda, at that moment, the bell for the next round rang, Takeda immediately attacked Kanichi, but Kanichi couldn't land a kick on him anymore, and Takeda began to counterattack Kanichi, at this point, Kanichi said that he would rather be defeated than abandon his friends, so, he immediately used a knee strike on Takeda, suddenly, he stepped back and fell from the top floor, however, Kanichi immediately grabbed him, meanwhile, Mew saw Kanichi in danger, so, she ran over, while he told his to let go, otherwise, both of them would fall, but Kanichi still tried to pull him up, fortunately, Yukita had regained consciousness in time and caught them, ensuring the safety of everyone, as soon as Mew arrived, she thought these guys were harassing Kanichi, so, she dealt with them, in the afternoon, the whole group was taken to see Master Akisame for treatment, just by looking at him, Akisame noticed Takeda's injured left hand, so, he casually adjusted it for him, surprisingly, helping Takeda's hand regain movement, making him happy to regain hope in his boxing career, on the Ragnarok side, they heard about Takeda's defeat, so, they decided to teach him a lesson, the next day, Kanichi continued to endure Mew's training, at this point, he wanted to ask Mew out on a date, but didn't know who to ask for advice, so Ma Kensei came to advise him, and also sold Kanichi a magazine with sneakily taken pictures of Mew, suddenly, Mew appeared to invite him for shopping, thinking it was a date, unexpectedly, he turned out to be carrying her shopping bags, suddenly, the Ragnarok gang appeared, this guy said he wanted to have a private conversation with Kanichi, Mew took the opportunity to call home, it turns out that Ma Kensei had been following them, on the other side, this guy is challenging Kanichi to a fight, even though he didn't want to fight him, but he insulted him, calling him a coward, making him angry, he immediately agreed to fight him, immediately, the guy rushed to punch him, but Kanichi easily blocked his attack, surprisingly, 
Suji's body was very robust, so, he couldn't harm him in any way. Kanichi noticed that his offensive moves were n. no longer effective, resulting in him continuously taking hits. Eventually, he was brought under the guy's control. He thought he was about to get his leg broken. Takeda arrived in time to rescue him. When he learned that Takeda's hand had recovered, Suji was surprised. So, Takeda immediately took Kanichi and ran away. He ordered his subordinates to chase after them. Fortunately, Ma Kensei arrived and took them swimming. By the evening, when Kanichi regained consciousness, he sensed the hostility from the martial arts masters, because he ended up losing that fight. So that night, the martial arts masters conducted an intense training session for Kanichi. The next morning, after Kanichi's training, he felt that everyone seemed strange. When he learned that he was about to be detained and trained 24-7, Kanichi immediately ran away. However, Ma Sensei tempted Kanichi, saying that here he will live together with Mew. So, Kanichi immediately changed his mind and ran home to ask his parents to come to the dojo. When they learned that he went there for training, Kanichi's father agreed. The next morning, Kanichi packed up and moved here, thinking he would be happy with Mew. Unexpectedly, as soon as he stepped in, it was all hostility. They said that from now on, he officially became a disciple of Ryo Zanpaku. So, Kanichi was put in the training furnace. The master said this exercise was the dance of ink drying, making his abdominal muscles very sore. Next, he was forced to become a human plow. After that, he faced the courage challenge with Shigu Ri and even Apachai. By evening, Kanichi realized that Ma Sensei had deceived him. So, the young man planned to escape. Unexpectedly, he saw a letter from his father. He said that no matter how difficult it was, he had to persevere. So, Kanichi decided to stay. Suddenly, in the evening, Ma Kensei led him to a hot spring, thinking that Mew and Shigu Ri would be there. So, he tried to overcome the traps on the way. Unexpectedly, it was the principal. At this point, Hanoka thought that her brother had been tempted by Mew. So, she decided to visit the martial arts dojo to check, while Kanichi, at 4 in the morning, was already forced to wake up for a run, then continued to get punched, and had to practice protecting his food. Even buying groceries with Mew required carrying two iron weights. Meanwhile, Hanoka infiltrated the martial arts dojo and encountered Apachai, causing her to be scared and run away. Unexpectedly, she slipped and fell. Fortunately, Apachai caught her in time. So, Hanoka realized that he was a good person. She asked Apachai to lead her to find Kanichi. Suddenly, she got her food snatched by Shiguri's mouse. Realizing that neither of them knew how to make tea, Hanoka told them to put the tea leaves in the teapot, pour boiling water, and it's done, surprising them. While Kanichi was shopping with Mew, he saw Hanoka playing with Apachai and Shiguri, but she still didn't like Mew. At this point, Hanoka watched her brother's training, seeing him being beaten by everyone, making her think that Kanichi was being bullied. But Kanichi still stood up, just like when he was little and used to protect her. So, Hanoka realized that her brother was stronger now. By the evening, she was reassured and went home. Unexpectedly, the next morning, Hanoka came back to play. While he was at school watering the plants, Nijima came to find Kanichi, saying that Kasara, the one looking for him, had been promoted to the eighth fist. But Kanichi still didn't know what the eighth fist was. They are the eight strongest members of the Ragnarok gang. So, you better quickly focus on training and I will help you gather more information. When both of them were coming home from school, then Kanichi saw Suji bothering a girl. It turns out he didn't accept Kasara being promoted to the eighth fist, surpassing him, so, he wanted to fight her. Suddenly, Kanichi gave him a kick for harassing a woman. But at this point, he learned that she was the eighth fist, Kasara. When Kasara wanted to challenge Kanichi to a fight, he said, my rule is not to fight with women. Unexpectedly, Kasara kicked and tore his bandage, Suddenly, she said, I have things to do, but I will settle with you in Takeda soon. At this point, Mew realized that Kanichi was still not a match for Kasara. While Nijima was observing the settlement between the two gangs, he saw the 8th Fist group, surprising him because they only sent out three members, but they had already knocked out 50 opponents. The next morning, after returning from school, Suji looked for Kanichi again, because yesterday, he dared to sneak attack him. So, Suji immediately attacked him, unexpectedly. This time Kanichi was much stronger, easily defeating him. At this point, Suji accepted defeat to Kanichi. But before leaving, Suji said that Takeda was in danger, because the Hermit of the Six Fist had been tasked with dealing with him. By the afternoon, Kanichi had asked Akisame to train him in real combat skills. So, the next morning, 
Kanichi officially started training. Saka Ki taught him a new move, capable of blocking the opponent with just one hand. Next up was Apachai, causing Kanichi to be frightened. Fortunately, Akisame stepped in to spar with him, so, he learned an attack move using his elbow. Meanwhile, Akisame taught him how to lock an opponent's hand joint. At this point, Takeda also arrived for hand joint treatment, when he found out that Takeda was still afraid, because, until now, no one had safely escaped from the Ragnarok gang, so, Akisame took him to the martial arts dojo to see Kanichi training. He said that Kanichi was still trying to train to protect his friends. Even though he is a coward, when protecting someone, his courage will be revealed, even getting hit by Apachai until he loses his mind. So, Takeda realized this, when he was about to leave, Kanichi chased after him, asking him to save his phone number, if he's in danger, he should call him immediately, unexpectedly, on the way back, he encountered the 8th fist, Kasara, thought Yukita would handle him, unexpectedly, he helped Takeda, turns out, he also wants to leave the Ragnarok gang, so, both of them collaborated to deal with them, suddenly, Takeda's phone got hit accidentally, coincidentally, it connected to Kanichi's phone, Realizing there was a fight going on over there, Kanichi and Mew ran to find them, as for Takeda and Yukita, they had already taken care of all the underlings, so, Kasara decided to settle things with them, Yukita grabbed her collar, but was taken down by Kasara with just one move, when Takeda run forward, he also got dealt with by her using Taekwondo, but remembering Kanichi's determination, so, Takeda stood up again, unexpectedly, still got defeated by her, so, they all charged in together to beat them up. When this guy was about to break Yukita's arm, Kanichi managed to arrive in time. Seeing both of them injured made him furious, immediately took care of these unruly guys. While Kasara was enjoying fighting with him, Mew also stepped in to fight her, making her angry because Mew's chest was bigger, and called her a dairy cow. So, Kasara immediately threw a kick, but Mew easily blocked it. Suddenly, Kanichi saw them continuing to attack Takeda. Thus, he immediately defeated all of these people. At this moment, Kasara realized that Mew was very strong, so, she was also defeated by her. Suddenly, another group appeared. It turns out that Nijima came to help him, and they even formed a group for Kanichi called Shinpaku. So, they managed to save Takeda and Yutaki, but Mew noticed that the Six Fist had not appeared yet. The next morning, Kanichi immediately asked Nijima about the Shinpaku gang. I and you are the leaders. I have the brain, and you have the muscles. Together, we will become the strongest team to dominate the city. So, Kanichi immediately slapped him back to reality. When Kanichi arrived at the flower garden, he saw that Takeda and Yukita had recovered, so, they wanted to thank him for saving them. On Kasara's side, she was furious about being defeated by that dairy cow, so, she wanted to find them for revenge, while everyone praised him for dealing with them, even though Mew knocked the leader down. Meanwhile, Nijima was confidently bragging about his own gang leading his gang for a stroll in the city. Unexpectedly, they encountered the Hermit of the Six Fists, so, he casually threw a guy into the water, realizing that they couldn't win against him, so, Nijima immediately told his gang members to run ahead, leaving him alone to deal with the Hermit, surprisingly, Nijima immediately apologized to him, unexpectedly, Nijima then threw sand in his face and fled. The next day, Izumi was planning to ask Kanichi out on a date, but he already had plans with Mew leaving Izumi disappointed, suddenly, Nijima came up with a plan to set up Izumi with Kanichi. The guy would then flirt with Mew to make her join his gang. So, Nijima asked Izumi if she wanted to go to Kanichi's martial arts school, thinking she might wear some seductive outfit, unexpectedly, she was wearing regular clothes, but it was still okay, suddenly, they saw Kanichi being thrown out, she realized that there was another girl here, and they were all eccentric individuals, at this point, they all went in to have tea. Nijima realized that this was an opportunity to drive a wedge between Kanichi and Mew. So, both of them started arguing with each other. They debated whether Kanichi was better at martial arts or gardening. Meanwhile, the martial arts master's eavesdropped outside. This left Kanichi unsure of how to respond, contemplating escape. Suddenly, Izumi expressed a desire to experience martial arts. Mew's grandfather said she needed to pass an initiation test first. The test required using one finger to perform a push-up, surprisingly, Mew did it very easily, so, he allowed Izumi to use both hands, however, Izumi couldn't do it, meanwhile, Nijima kept getting threatened by Shiguri, then ended up falling into the martial arts school's trap, at this moment, 
Izumi is observing Kenichi's training, and realizing his determination. Mew says that Kenichi trains because he doesn't want to run away anymore, by evening. Both bid farewell to everyone in return. Nevertheless, she will not give up. Continuing to win Kenichi's affection, the next day, Nijima informed Kenichi that the Hermit of the Six Fists was looking for him. Surprisingly, Kenichi shows no concern. Nijima realizes he has matured. Suddenly, in class, Kenichi sees him chasing Mew. Nijima says his name is Tanimoto, handsome and well-built, so he has many female fans. Turns out, he's inviting Mew to join the Romeo and Juliet play, causing Kenichi heartache, because he's not as handsome as him. That night, Kenichi asked Ma Kensei for help. He took the opportunity to teach Kenichi some Chinese martial arts moves. When locked, use a hook punch, raise his elbow to increase strength. He also advised, if you just make an effort, your emotions will be conveyed to Mew. While Mew is trying to rehearse, the next morning, Kenichi secretly went to find out about Tanimoto. Unexpectedly, upon arrival, he found Tanimoto's performance room had been vandalized. It turns out, a few troublemakers had picked a fight with him yesterday. Suddenly, they came back intending to deal with him again. So, Kenichi immediately intervened to stop these unruly guys. Upon learning that he is the leader of the Shinpaku gang, they quickly ran away. At this moment, Tanimoto greatly admires Kenichi. Thinking you are a martial arts genius, suddenly, Mew runs over, so, he immediately left. That night, Kenichi still sees Mew passionately rehearsing. Suddenly, Nijima came to find him, saying that Tanimoto is very suspicious. The next morning, Kenichi and Mew hear the news. The three guys he fought with yesterday are hospitalized, surprising Kenichi, because he didn't fight them. Even Nijima thinks Kenichi did it. But Izumi still believes in Kenichi, suddenly, Tanimoto came and said he believed in him, and proposes to be friends with Kenichi. At this point, Mew has performed even better. Kenichi imagines the final scene where they will kiss, causing him heartache. Meanwhile, Kasara, upon hearing the news, has found Mew, making her very excited. But the juniors say, Hermit warned not to touch Mew. Why do I have to listen to him? Finally, the performance day arrives, surprising Mew because everyone is here but Kenichi doesn't want to come watch. Afraid of seeing a kissing scene, suddenly, he sees Kasara planning to disrupt Mew's performance. So, Kenichi intervenes to stop them. He single-handedly defeated the gang of underlings. Thus, Kasara steps up to fight him, but Kenichi says he won't hit women, making her angry, thinking he's humiliating her. So she rushes to attack Kenichi. On Mew's side, she is still focused on performing. She realizes Kenichi hasn't arrived yet, while Kasara keeps pressuring Kenichi to fight her. It turns out Kasara had previously attended a taekwondo class, in fights. Kasara always defeated the boys. But inadvertently, she heard they let her win because Kasara is a girl, making her feel humiliated. But no matter how she attacked Kenichi, he still stands up to stop Kasara. Suddenly, she asked, Do you like Mew, don't you? Seeing Kenichi's determination, Kasara decides to leave. She starts to find Kenichi very interesting. Meanwhile, Kenichi thinks Mew and Tanimoto have already kissed. The play has come to an end. Akisame now realizes that Tanimoto doesn't enjoy acting, surprising him as he can read his inner thoughts. While Kenichi is at a loss about what to do, he sees Tanimoto throwing away the bouquet he received. So he tells him, in reality, I hate playing the role of a model student, leaving Kenichi puzzled. He takes the bouquet and leaves. By the evening, Kenichi thinks Mew is angry with him for not attending the performance. But Mew already knows he protected her performance. It turns out Nijima informed Mew. Upon learning that the staged kiss with Tanimoto didn't happen, Kenichi is overjoyed. Suddenly, the Hermit of the Six Fists arrived, and begins to attack Kenichi, causing him to fall onto a bus, to separate Mew and Kenichi. While Mew was worried, Akisame said that Ma Kensei and Saka Ki had gone after them. At this point, Kenichi learns that Tanimoto is actually the Hermit, he continuously attacks Kenichi, and Ma Kensei realizes that his martial arts are Chinese Kung Fu, making his arms as hard as steel. When he tightens his grip around Kenichi's neck, he is surprised that Kenichi doesn't faint. It turns out that he became so tough thanks to Apachai. When Kenichi was about to persuade him, he attacked him again, but Kenichi manages to catch him, remembering the punch Ma Kensei taught him. So, Kenichi immediately attacks and sends the hermit flying. Luckily, Saka Ki catches him in time. At this point, Kenichi recognizes the need to become stronger to protect everyone. Hermit uses a martial art called Chinese Kufun, 
Kenichi realizes that the name may be related to his master, Kensei. Suddenly, in the evening, Kensei sneaks out. Unexpectedly, he was discovered by him. So, Master Kensei takes Kenichi to a Chinese restaurant. Suddenly, a girl appears and attacks him. It turns out to be Renka, his daughter, seeing him escape. Kenichi learns that Renka always wanted to bring him back to her mother. So, you're my father's disciple, huh? Why are you so weak? She said, my father has an older brother who is an assassin in the underworld, because he was always killing people, so, her father wanted to stop him as well. Kenichi decided to help Renka find her master as well. When both enter the gang's hideout, they encounter Sugetsu, Kensei's older brother. Unexpectedly, he even attacked Renka, she's his granddaughter, I don't allow anyone to challenge me, fortunately, master Kensei arrives in time to stop him, thus, both of them begin to fight each other. Kenichi realizes this is a true life and death battle. He thinks he has won, surprisingly, Ma Kensei immediately turned back and defeated him, making him wonder why his younger brother is stronger. Because of my friends, seeing him wanting to end himself in the flames, Kenichi intends to pull him away, don't you still have one disciple? Suddenly, he hits Kenichi into the elevator, finally, both return to the martial arts dojo, on the Ragnarok gang's side. The eight leaders are gathering, they are very interested in Kenichi. While he is receiving a love letter in his locker, unexpectedly, Mew gets jealous and leaves early, by the evening. Kenichi tells his martial arts masters, that the person he wants to protect is Mew, so, he will reject the girl who wrote the letter. Suddenly, Nijima infiltrates the martial arts dojo, informing Kenichi that the four fist members are planning an attack, but Kenichi doesn't want to get involved with them, so the next morning, Nijima has to deal with them on his own thinking that his Shinpaku gang is stronger, but unexpectedly, all the people in that cafe are his underlings, meanwhile, Kenichi is heading to the meeting point mentioned in the letter, suddenly, he sees Nijima being attacked, but Kenichi doesn't want to get involved, at this point, a guy says that Kenichi's gang leader will definitely come, because the leader won't abandon his teammates, so, Kenichi steps forward to stop them, surprisingly, Yukita and Takeda also arrive to help him, causing the four fists guy to go crazy, so Kenichi decides to punch him, when he wonders why the Four Fists guy is so weak, Takeda discovers that this guy is an imposter, at this point, Kenichi also realizes that Yukita and Takeda had arranged to meet here, it turns out Nijima was the one who sent the letter, shocking all three of them, and they just want to kill him, meanwhile, the real Four Fists have gathered information about Kenichi, Nijima has now reached their hideout, to investigate the information about the Five Fists Siegfried, because he is known as the Immortal One, unexpectedly, he is discovered, realizing that this person is a girl, so, he immediately used his special technique and ran away, but still can't escape the five fists, so, he gets caught, the next morning, his gang informs Kenichi, that Nijima has been kidnapped, why do I have to rescue that guy? At this point, Mew realizes that Kenichi still wants to save Nijima, while Nijima was about to become shark bait, Kenichi has returned home to seek his master's help, so, they manage to find his location, but they won't participate in the disciples battle, at this point, Kenichi arrives at the harbor and locates them, the five fists guy challenges him, and Kenichi punches him, causing him to faint, why is this guy so weak? Surprisingly, he was not harmed at all, and he hits Kenichi back, Kenichi realizes that no matter how he attacks, the guy doesn't even lose a single hair, could he be invincible? Meanwhile, Mew is chasing after the four fists, but she is hindered by this girl, who even tears her clothes, making Mew angry, and she immediately knocked her out. Mew realizes that she has lost track of the four fists. Kenichi is still being attacked by him, yet he finds time to take out paper and compose music. Suddenly, he remembers Saka Ki's words, if you get too agitated, your opponent will read your attacks. So, Kenichi starts to loosen up, making him think that Kenichi has gone crazy, unexpectedly, before Kenichi can even hit him, he collapses. Kenichi realizes that he was actually following the rhythm of his attacks, as he could read the opponent's tempo. Suddenly, Kenichi starts performing a ritual, making him wonder what Kenichi is doing. At this point, Kenichi remembers, when he asked his martial arts masters, if he could combine all martial arts together. So, he has created a new technique, using the fist of karate, the speed of kung fu, the stance of jujitsu, and the power of Muay Thai. So, Kenichi delivers an incredibly fast punch, Catching him off guard, his punch is truly astonishing, so, I'm defeated, at this point, Mew has also returned, 
telling him to quickly board the boat to rescue Nijima. Unexpectedly, the ship has already left, making him worried. While Nijima was comfortably eating and playing around here, on the Four Fists side, they have learned that Siegfried has been defeated. As for Odin, the Fist of the Highest, he is surprised to learn that the person is Kenichi. The next morning, Kenichi thinks he has become stronger, but unexpectedly, he is still defeated by Mew. Meanwhile, Hinoka was angry that her brother had been bullied, but when she learns that Mew trains every night, he regained his spirit. On the Ragnarok gang's side, the hermit has returned, so, Odin assigns him the task of dealing with Kenichi. While Kenichi is hanging out with Hinoka, suddenly, she sees Tanamoto being bullied, so, she runs over to intervene. When they attack Hinoka, Tanamoto punches them to protect her, seeing her injured, he takes Hinoka to his house to bandage her up. Hinoka is surprised that his house is very wealthy, and she even insists on cooking rice for him, even though he knows it's not okay to eat. Tanamoto still eats, to get this girl to come home, he realizes that Hinoka is like his little sister, by the evening, he manages to bring Hinoka home. Meanwhile, Kenichi is still searching for his sister, the next morning, the dojo is in great spirits, because he was enjoying the energy massage generated by Kenichi's power. It turns out they're teaching Kenichi the double strike technique. While Hinoka is visiting Tanamoto's house, unexpectedly, they encounter the Four Fists Loki. He is frustrated because Odin assigned him the task of dealing with Kenichi. So, Hinoka scolds him. My brother won't lose to you. Surprising both of them, he immediately grabs her. On Nijima's side, he is creating an advertising website for his Shinpaku gang. Suddenly, Kenichi receives a message from Loki, seeing that Hinoka has been captured, which infuriates Kenichi, prompting him to run off to find them. At this point, Takeda informs Mew about it. On Loki and Hermit's side, they are still waiting for Kenichi. Hermit doesn't like this impudent guy, but he told him that he must obey the orders of the Saint Fist. Kenichi has arrived at the meeting point, unexpectedly stopped by Hermit, so, both of them start fighting, while the two masters bet on who will win. Kenichi is being thoroughly beaten by Hermit, blocking all of his attacks. Hermit then strikes Kenichi's neck to end the fight, thinking he has won. However, Kenichi still tries to stand up, determined to save his sister, so, he uses the double strike technique. Hermit thinks he has blocked it, but unexpectedly, Kenichi uses a combination move and defeats Hermit. He wonders how many martial arts disciplines Kenichi knows. Suddenly, Loki grabs Hinoka, threatening Kenichi and tells Hermit to finish him off, but he refuses to obey Loki. Have you forgotten your debt to the Saint Fist? It turns out Hermit's father passed away, leaving him a large corporation, but due to being too young, it was swindled away. His sister is also seriously ill. When they are about to deal with him, the Saint Fist appear to rescue him, seeing that Hermit still refuses to act. Loki decides to handle it himself, making Sokka Ki furious, because Hinoka is still being threatened. Kenichi cannot fight back, when Mew's group arrives, they see Kenichi still being beaten. Akisame realizes he is using his joints, to increase the strength of his attacks. At this moment, Hermit sees Hinoka injured, which reminds him of his sister. So, Hermit immediately saves Hinoka. Seeing that Hinoka is safe, Kenichi immediately took care of him. When he is about to face both of them alone, Odin, the first fist, appears, noticing the yin-yang emblem on Kenichi's collar. Long time no see, Kenichi which surprises him, suddenly, Odin tells Loki to leave, and despite being bitter, he has to run away, at this point, Odin said to the hermit, the Saint Fist has no orders, it's all made up by Loki, but he decides to leave Ragnarok, so, Odin departs as well, finally, the whole group is safe, suddenly, hermit wants to continue the fight with Kenichi, so, he decides to face him, even though he had been hit by Kenichi's knee strike, hermit can still stand up, Kenichi notices that he has lost consciousness, at this point, the two masters bring everyone home, and treat Kenichi's injuries, as for Hermit, he is being treated with acupuncture by Master Kensei, he even tells Ma Kensei about his older brother, after that, Hermit decides to leave, when Kenichi thinks he won't come back, Tanamoto unexpectedly returns to school, because he wants to find an opportunity to revenge on Kenichi, meanwhile, Nijima continues to urge him to join Shinpaku, at this point, Kenichi asked the principal to teach him to create his own special technique. Suddenly, Renka visits the martial arts gym. When Mew learns that she is Ma's master's daughter, she is surprised because Renka is very close to Kenichi, and wants to stay here. The next morning, both of them continue to compete to help Kenichi train, making Mew feel uneasy. In the evening, Renka continues to follow Kenichi, 
curious about why he got into martial arts. Kenichi shares the story of his first encounter with Mew and his desire to become stronger to protect her. Mew overhears the conversation. Despite this, Renka doesn't give up and continues to challenge Mew. The next day, when everyone takes Kenichi to the swimming pool for training, Renka notices two disciples of her master coming to find her. So, she lies to Mew, saying they are villains, leading Mew to confront them. Unexpectedly, Mew's bra comes loose in the process. So, Kenichi rushes to help her. At this point, he easily takes down one opponent. Renka notices that Kenichi's leg strength is formidable. When facing the second opponent, he gets pulled into the water. Surprisingly, he manages to fight underwater. However, both of them are running out of oxygen. The principal noticed that both of them had reached their limit. So, he immediately split the water to save them. When they return to the martial arts dojo, they mention that the master is really missing Renka. So, Renka decides to go back with them, and she tells Kenichi, you already have your own technique. You just haven't realized it yet. The next day, Nijima informs Kenichi that the Seven Fists have organized a gambling arena. It's time to confront and defeat them. Kenichi also realizes that the Ragnarok gang is up to no good. So that night, he decides to disband them. Unexpectedly, as soon as he infiltrates, he is discovered. Nijima challenges one of the Seven Fists to fight Kenichi. If Kenichi loses, the Seven Fists can do anything. But if Kenichi wins, he must leave the Ragnarok gang. He agrees, as he professional sumo wrestler, when he learns that if he loses, he has to join the sumo association of the opponent. Kenichi immediately rushes in to fight fiercely. Unexpectedly, his opponent's body is very thick, rendering Kenichi's punches ineffective. So, he counterattacked Kenichi, revealing his dream of popularizing sumo worldwide. So, Kenichi decides to use sumo against him. Surprisingly, he was hit by Kenichi's combo. Kenichi lifts him and throws him out of the arena. Thus, he loses, and his dream of sumo comes to an end. I just told you to leave the Ragnarok gang, but I didn't tell you to give up on your dreams. He agreed to it. Thus, Kenichi emerges victorious. The next day, the Seven Fists are beaten badly, because he wanted to leave the gang. When Kenichi and Mew are returning from school, they encounter Kasara mistreating a cat. So, Mew decides to take action against her. It turns out Kasara just wanted to give the cat some milk. This immediately shocked Kasara. Because you can't let everyone know about the eight fists and then go take care of cats. Suddenly, two guys appear wanting to harm the little cat. That's when they were immediately dealt with. At this point, Mew decides to adopt the kitten. But she is worried about the martial arts masters at home. So, she entrusts the kitten to Kasara. Upon returning home, they notice that Mew is acting strangely. Because they were afraid there wouldn't be anyone to cook for them. The martial arts masters question Kenichi about it. By evening. Kasara still hasn't found someone to adopt the kitten. When Mew comes to inquire, both of them open up to each other. While she's out buying milk, Kasara is surrounded by third fist underlings. Thinking she betrayed Ragnarok, because she was protecting the kitten, she got beaten up. When Kenichi learns that none of the martial arts masters oppose raising a cat, he goes to find Mew. Suddenly, they both see Kasara being attacked. Kasara said that the kitten was injured and needed immediate medical attention. Mew rushes to take the kitten. At this moment, Kenichi quickly arrives. When he touches her chest, he realizes she's a girl. Suddenly, Third Fist appears and knocks down Kenichi, because he can't bring himself to hit a girl. So, he is continuously attacked by the gang. Kenichi grabs Kasara and flees. At this moment, Mew finds a doctor for the kitten, and returns to where Kasara is. When Kenichi is surrounded, fortunately, Shiguri arrives. As she has finished preparing dinner, Mew and Kenichi haven't returned yet. At this point, Kenichi immediately stepped in to protect them, urging them to run quickly, and telling Shigu Ri not to use a sword. So, she uses a rice scoop instead. Surprisingly, the rice scoop can cut through their weapons. So, they retreat. Suddenly, Kasara wanted to go handle something. She returns to the base to find the third fist, announcing that she's leaving Ragnarok. After Kasara leaves, third fist is surprised that four members have left the gang. The next morning, upon hearing that Mew can adopt the kitten, she immediately goes to find the doctor. But someone else has already adopted it. The next day, Tanamoto informs Kenichi. The three leaders of Ragnarok are at a completely different level. And Odin is the disciple of the Saint Fist. While shopping with Mew, Kenichi wonders, when did Odin meet him? And it seems he is related to his yin-yang badge somehow. But Kenichi doesn't remember anything about it. He only knows that he exchanged it with a cat emblem at a convenience store. So, Mew decides to go to that convenience store with Kenichi, 
When they arrive, Mew informs Kenichi, the person who exchanged the cat emblem with him is her, and she recognized him from the first day, it's been 10 years since we met, hasn't it, Kenichi? Upon seeing Odin, Kenichi immediately becomes defensive, Odin said, I didn't come here to fight, at this moment, Kenichi still doesn't remember who he is, this annoys Odin, so he buys a snack, Kenichi then recalls his real name as Ryoto, it turns out that when they were kids, Ryoto found the cat emblem, but because it was ugly, he gave it to Kenichi, unexpectedly, Kenichi exchanged it for Mew's yin-yang emblem, so, the three of them become friends, suddenly, a group of thugs starts trouble with the old lady at the grocery store, Mew takes care of them, since then, both Kenichi and Odin admire her, but Kenichi still doesn't remember their mutual promise, making Ryoto angry, stating that the battle will not stop, the promise was for them to fight each other, the winner will get the yin-yang emblem, because he couldn't advise Ryoto, Kenichi has to fight him, however, their levels are completely different, making Kenichi fearful, Mew realizes that this is the killing intent, no matter how hard Kenichi tries, he can't land a single hit on Ryoto, so, Kenichi is defeated, but he still stands up, he's not even afraid anymore, because his masters are scarier, despite that, Kenichi still can't land a punch on Ryoto, Ryoto's technique is called Saikuken, which can control everything within its range, eventually, Kenichi is defeated by Ryoto, Mew doesn't understand why Ryoto goes to such lengths for the yin-yang emblem, when leaving, Ryoto vows to clean up Kenichi's Shinpaku gang, on Nijima's side, they recruit Hermit into the gang, easily defeating the Four Fists imposters, as for Tanamoto, he didn't know who this person was, it turns out he was the Five Fists, Siegfried, after losing to Kenichi, he sought inspiration for his music, unexpectedly, he encounters Nijima, realizing that Nijima can help elevate his music to new heights, so, he decides to join Shinpaku, Nijima still wants to recruit Tanamoto, but he refuses, meanwhile, Kenichi realizes he is too weak, so, the next morning, he resolves to train harder, wanting to increase his killing intent, suddenly, the principal walked in, saying that he will train Kenichi, shocking everyone, no one knows if he survived and will return, Nijima seeks out Kasara, using photos of her with cats to threaten her, however, Siegfried opposes this approach, saying it's no different from Ragnarok, so, he immediately used the cat to entice Kasara, when she learns that the crazy second fist is looking for her, Kasara agrees to cooperate, the next morning, Kenichi prepared to go to Yamagadani for training, the four fists tell the second fist that they see him more fit to be the leader than Ryoto, the second fist disregards their words, the four fists acknowledge that this person is very formidable, Kenichi arrives at Yamagadani, the principal said, your first exercise is not to train at all, no martial arts for a week, Kenichi doesn't understand why but starts living a primitive life, even catching fish with his hands, seeing the principal catch many fish, he thought that they had enough for both of them to eat, the principal says, this is my dinner, you take care of yourself, so, Kenichi starts hunting for his own food, luckily, he finds some nuts, but from early morning, he always feels something behind him, every day passes with Kenichi eating nuts, while the principal finds plenty of food, so, he decides to snatch his food, unexpectedly, he gets lost, by evening, Kenichi has fainted, when he wakes up, he finds that he has been rescued, the person introduces himself as Ogata, after he was given food by him, Kenichi decides to help Ogata chop wood, after that, they go to the river to fetch water, Kenichi thinks the principal is still watching him, but it turns out to be a bear, realizing that he was in trouble, Kenichi thought he was about to die, Ogata arrives to save him and effortlessly knocks out the bear, even though the bear is already down, Ogata continues to hit it, Kenichi realizes the terrifying killing intent, on Akisami's side, he tells Mew that when she was younger, the dojo had another disciple, but he had such a strong killing intent that the principal expelled him, Kenichi notices that Ogata is strange, suddenly, Ogata asked, are you my disciple? I will teach you the assassination technique, while the principal observes from afar, it turns out he was testing Kenichi to see his martial arts path, at this point, Kenichi refuses because he practices martial arts not to kill, suddenly, Ogata realizes that Kenichi is their disciple, so, Ogata decides to show Kenichi the way back, Seeing Kenichi, the principal is very pleased, while the young man is still upset, suddenly, the principal tells him to try to feel his surroundings, Kenichi draws a circle around himself, and catches the first fish, he even dodges the principal's kick, 
the principal explains that it's the Saikuken, so, Kenichi's real training begins. Meanwhile, Odin is excited, to know that Kenichi is their disciple, on Nijima's side, they're trying to convince Tanamoto to join Shinpaku. While others are performing the joining ceremony, suddenly, Nijima discovers his subordinates have been defeated, so, he decides to plan a counterattack. Takeda and Yukita have been ambushed by the second fist, while Kasara and Mew encounter the third fist. The second fist easily defeats Yukita and Takeda, surprising them, as he has never trained in any martial art. Suddenly, Nijima also arrived, so, he immediately ran off to lure him after him. Nijima is unable to catch him, and he escapes into his own trap. When cornered, he escapes easily, while trying to deal with Nijima. Siegfried arrives to rescue him, Siegfried holds the second fist, allowing Nijima to escape. While Kanichi's master was observing the battle, Siegfried realizes the second fist is too strong, but he still decides to confront him, so, Siegfried has controlled him and plunged into the water. Suddenly, the second fist unleashes his true strength, he manages to escape, prompting Akisame and Sakaki to dive in and rescue Siegfried. Meanwhile, Mew and Kasara are surrounded. Kasara decides to deal with the third fist. Mew helps her to fend off the subordinates. Kasara refrains from attacking the third fist as she was saved by Freya before. Kasara prefers martial arts, while Freya forces her to use weapons, but Kasara prefers to use martial arts. Since meeting Kanichi, Kasara has realized her path. When Freya attacks, Kasara successfully defends. On Kanichi's side, he is getting beaten up. Suddenly, Kasara imitates Mew's martial arts to evade Freya's attacks. Kasara lands a strike on Freya's head, surprising her. Freya accepts defeat as her weapon is broken. So, Freya acknowledged Kasara and left. Nijima's side is surrounded by the four fists. Kanichi thinks it's hell, but suddenly sees a message from Nijima. Nijima encourages Kanichi to keep training. Kanichi realizes something has happened to them while they are continuously throwing fire into the warehouse, to lure Nijima out. So, they immediately try to capture him. Suddenly, the seventh fist arrives to help Nijima. Unexpectedly, Hermit is also with them. At this moment, the principal is running on power lines to bring Kanichi back. Loki's subordinates are continuously being defeated. When they retreat, first fist and second fist also arrive. Suddenly, Loki began to change. Turns out, his goal is Ryoto and he wants to establish a new group, with Second Fist as the leader. Nijima realizes that the name Second Fist is strange, surprisingly, he punches Loki and returns to deal with this gang. Loki wonders why Second Fist is loyal to Ryoto, Second Fist replies that he follows only those he acknowledges, Loki is defeated, and they continue to surround Nijima's group, Seventh Fist rushes in, unexpectedly, he is punched by Ryoto, suddenly, Kanichi arrives just in time, at this moment, the martial arts masters are preparing to watch the decisive battle. When they find out that this person has beaten many of their friends, Kanichi kicks him, but Hermit intervenes. Hermit will deal with him. Second Fist attacks Hermit. Nijima explains that Second Fist has never trained in martial arts, however, he is dubbed the unbeatable one. So, Hermit also begins to take it seriously. He immediately counterattacks, but he remains unfazed, immediately turns to knock out Hermit. When he thinks he's won, Hermit catches him by the neck, and repeatedly delivers blows to him, surprisingly, it only fuels his sadistic pleasure in playing with him, he relies on his street fighting instincts, continuously attacking Hermit, suddenly, being attacked by Hermit with an elbow strike, because of his martial arts, he can predict his attacks, so, he immediately dislocates his hand and knocks him out, now it's Kanichi's turn, unexpectedly, the second fist still refuses to give up, suddenly, he gets a punch from Ryoto, Making Kanichi angry, when he attacks Kanichi, he realizes that he knows how to use Saikuken. Now both are within each other's attack range and continuously exchanging blows. While the Masters and Saint Fist are still watching from afar, Kanichi doesn't understand why Ryoto has changed so much. It's because of the promise to become stronger. So, I trained and formed this gang, and for Kanichi, it's to protect his friends. So, he lets his subordinates continue to attack everyone. While Hermit is being attacked sneakily, Siegfried arrived on time, suddenly, Takeda's group also reached this place, so, Kanichi felt at ease to fight Ryoto, and Kanichi toppled him using Mew's martial arts stance, at this moment, Ryoto began taking off his glasses, unexpectedly, Kanichi couldn't land a hit on him anymore, the principal realized that it was the third eye, capable of seeing through all the opponent's techniques, so, Kanichi got knocked out, 
it turns out Ryoto always harbored hatred towards Kenichi, because he was the one Mew chose, so, he learned all types of martial arts, but still couldn't find the strength he desired, until he met Saint Fist, Kenichi realized he could read his punches, suddenly, Siegfried suggested him to try using that technique, so, Kenichi began approaching Ryoto, and unleashed his most powerful punch, unexpectedly, Ryoto could still block it, so, Kenichi got knocked away by him, realizing he was trembling, Kenichi immediately banged his head to calm down, suddenly, Kenichi changed his attack stance, Apachai recognized it as his own stance, surprisingly, he managed to punch Ryoto in the face, when Ryoto realized he was using Mui Tai, Kenichi switched to Saka Ki's karate, everyone noticed he was imitating the martial arts and personalities of his masters, because the intense training days helped Kenichi acquire this skill, so, Kenichi switched to Chinese martial arts, next was Shigu Ri, and even Jujutsu to defeat him, they realized he was imitating quite convincingly, at this point, Ryoto got injured, but he didn't want Kenichi's pity, unexpectedly, he used his trump card, the principal recognized this move as the unity of yin and yang, so, he began attacking Kenichi, making him unable to defend himself, suddenly, Ryoto's body became overloaded, Master Kensei explained, although this move could help him break through his limits, it would lead to disability afterward, making them angry about why the Saint Fist could teach this move to the kid, at this point, he continuously attacked Kenichi, making him unable to retaliate, meanwhile, the Saint Fist saw Kenichi as a talent, so, he intended to take both of them with him, immediately, the other masters intervened, as he wasn't allowed to interfere in his disciple's battle, when he intended to finish Kenichi, unexpectedly, Kenichi counterattacked, even blocking his strikes, now Kenichi wanted to help Ryoto realize his mistake, so, he was determined to win against him, suddenly, Ryoto's body reached its limit, at this point, the warehouse began to collapse, Ryoto doesn't understand, why am I a genius? but I lost to an incompetent like you, and why are you always present when I turn around? Because you are my friend, no matter how you change, our friendship still remains unchanged. So, he returned the emblem to Kenichi, and let go, falling into the flames. Fortunately, Saint Fist arrived in time and took Yuto away. Meanwhile, the martial arts masters blew away the flames into the sky to save Kenichi. In the end, Kenichi emerged victorious. Upon returning, Kenichi was still forced to undergo training by the six martial arts masters. The next morning, Kenichi was happy because all his friends had recovered after the battle. But at this moment, Tanamoto spoke up. Defeating the Ragnarok gang only makes even more terrifying enemies come after you. That night, an organization called Yami was planning to attack the Ryozanpa Ku martial arts dojo. Because the leader of Yami is none other than the Saint Fist. The next morning, as Kenichi went for a walk with Mew and Hinoka, Mew sensed a murderous intent, unexpectedly, by evening, two figures appeared, and so, they began their assault, at this moment, Kenichi asked, who are you, we're here to take you to the hospital, knowing that Kenichi couldn't fight against girls, Mew stepped forward to block them, while Kenichi faced off against this young man, suddenly, Hinoka intervened and was thrown into the bushes by him, this angered Kenichi, leading to a furious exchange of blows, unexpectedly, Kenichi's punch caused the guy to be thrown back. Mew realized that Kenichi was serious only when protecting someone, suddenly, he told Mew, that the Yami organization was planning to attack the martial arts dojo. So, they came here to handle them. Meanwhile, at the dojo, assassins were attacking from within, but they can only help entertain the masters. This guy recognized that Kenichi was strong. So, both were defeated by Mew and Kenichi, knowing they were just following orders. Both let them go, on Yumi's side, they continued to send people to Japan, to challenge the Ryozanpa Ku Martial Arts Dojo. The next morning, Kenichi was planting flowers, when he encountered a girl who loved flowers, she said she was from China, after a brief conversation, she left, upon returning to the dojo. Kenichi was followed by Renka, causing Mew to feel jealous, suddenly, Nijima announced that Shinpaku was under attack, surprisingly, her martial art, drunken fist, could defeat the leaders of the gang. Luckily, Kenichi arrived in time. So, Kenichi stepped forward to challenge her. Suddenly, she asked, Why do you only defend? Because I don't hit women. So, Kenichi immediately used Master Kensei's indecent technique. Then, he transformed into Master Akisame. However, she easily escaped. It was at this moment that he realized she was the girl from earlier. She said, 
If I defeat you, I'll be accepted into Yami. So, she used drunken fist and defeated Kanichi. As she was about to finish the match, Kanichi immediately stood up and shifted to a defensive posture. When she attacked, Kanichi managed to catch her. Mew recognized this defensive stance as Idori. Kanichi restrained her and pinned her down in the flower garden. This angered the girl. Suddenly, Kanichi let go. So, the girl grabbed Kanichi's neck. Kanichi said, Someone who loves flowers can't be a villain. So, she released him and admitted defeat. Suddenly, her father appeared, because he still wanted to take Kanichi for Saint Fist. Surprisingly, he was very powerful. He easily defeated them all. When they were cornered, Master Kensei arrived. With just one move, Master Kensei knocked him out. At this point, Kensei said he had spared them, because if they fought seriously, Kanichi's group would be in trouble, and he loved his daughter very much. So, he decided to leave. The next morning, Kanichi realized that his masters were up to something. It turned out Saka Ki wanted to make Kanichi a bodyguard. Their mission was to escort a wealthy man. Unexpectedly, they were attacked on the way. However, the attacked car was just a decoy. Saka Ki recognized that the attacker was named Eclair. His martial art was an ancient Greek style. Surprisingly, the secretary was also an assassin. So, he caught up with them, and he casually got into the car. Kanichi and Saka Ki then attacked him. Unexpectedly, he kidnapped Kanichi. Now, he forced Saka Ki to exchange Kanichi for him. So, Saka Ki called the dojo to inform them. During dinner, Eclair revealed to Kanichi that he and Saka Ki were once on the same team. They specialized in assisting the FBI against the Mafia. So, Saka Ki brought the wealthy man to exchange for Kanichi. They thought the mission was successful. However, Saka Ki unexpectedly crashed through a window into the adjacent building. The wealthy man turned out to be Mew in disguise. So, they began to attack Kanichi and Mew, seeing Saka Ki and Eclair fighting on a different level. Kanichi was so shocked himself. Eclair remarked that Saka Ki's disciple was useless. Suddenly, the wealthy man ran out. This distracted Saka Ki, and he was thrown away by him. No matter how many bullets he fired, Eclair effortlessly dodged them. When he caught the wealthy man, Kanichi punched him in the face, making him angry and knocking Kanichi away. In his rage, he attacked Kanichi. Mew stepped in to block him. When both were in danger, Saka Ki returned just in time. He then engaged in a ruthless battle with him. In the end, Eclair was defeated. On the side of Sho at this moment, he was attending a meeting of the Yami organization with his master. His name was Akira, nicknamed the Fist Master. He was one of the top nine powerful figures in the Yami organization. At this time, the Saint Fist wanted to choose a disciple, who could defeat the strongest disciple of the Ryozanpa Ku Dojo. Meanwhile, on Kanichi's side, he just learned that today was the anniversary of Mew's parents' death, but he were still forced to train. Suddenly, that evening, Mew came to invite Kanichi to visit the grave with her the next day. The next morning, he thought they would take the bus, but unexpectedly, they had to run up the mountain. At this moment, Kanichi realized that Mew knew very little about her parents. After visiting the grave, the two of them went out to have fun together. Unbeknownst to them, they were being followed by Sho. While absorbed in admiring flowers, the two got lost. At this point, Mew encountered Sho observing a bird caught in a trap. When he intended to rush to rescue the little bird, he came face to face with Mew, and seeing her, he thought she looked like an angel. So, he immediately confessed his feelings to Mew. When Mew learned that he was a member of the Yami organization, she immediately attacked him, he said, come with me to the organization, and you will learn more about your parents. When Kanichi saw this guy taking Mew on a motorcycle, Kanichi immediately chased after them, he thought he would leave him behind, but unexpectedly, Kanichi climbed onto the roof and caught up with them, and he immediately destroyed his motorcycle. This made him furious, revealing his killing intent. When Kanichi was about to attack, Tanamoto intervened. Knowing that this guy was very strong, Kanichi said he would try to get stronger and protect Mew, so, she shouldn't rely on the strength of others. Therefore, Mew decided to return. Knowing he couldn't force her, he kissed Mew and left, leaving Kanichi bewildered. Although Kanichi was jealous, Mew ultimately stayed. The next day, Apachai and Kanichi discovered that the principal was secretly taking money from the martial arts dojo to buy paintings. Although he claimed it was just an old man's hobby, Kanichi still insisted on telling Mew. So, the principal immediately said, Do you know why a Mu Itai death god like Apachai would join the Ryozanpa Ku Dojo? Many years ago, the principal and Mew were traveling the world. When they arrived in a poor village, the entire village pooled their money, 
to ask the dojo master to eliminate a gang specializing in kidnapping children, but they were protected by the Muay Thai death god. So, the next morning, the principal went to investigate. Meanwhile, Mew saw a young man who was hungry. She immediately shared her meal with him, but he only ate a little, leaving the rest for birds and squirrels. That night, the dojo master rushed onto the boat to deal with them. So, they called Apachai out, and both fought fiercely. The gang leader realized that if they continued fighting, they would lose miserably. Meanwhile, Mew sneaked onto the boat, but they discovered her presence, thus, they were immediately kicked by her. So, they took the children hostage. While the principal was enthusiastically fighting Apachai, he was shocked to see Mew in danger. He saw Apachai looking worried about Mew. So, the principal asked, You're a good person. Why are you following them? Because they gave me food, Apachai, realizing he had been deceived. Suddenly, he started attacking Mew. You can't escape, boy. So, the principal immediately defeated him, and along with Apachai, they took the children and left. The next morning, after the gang leader regained consciousness, the principal erased his memory, they brought many treasures back to the village. Even though Kanichi heard the whole story, he still wanted to talk to Mew about the painting. He immediately had his memory erased by the principal, that made him forget what he was about to do. On Sho's side, he met Boris, a member of Yami, who was preparing to attack Ryozan Paku. Meanwhile, Kanichi was trying to escape, because he was being forced to train by the martial arts masters. If you don't train, you'll die in the upcoming battle with Yami. They warned him, but Kanichi was determined to run away. That night, he went to Tanamoto's house. Despite being chased away, Kanichi stubbornly stayed there. Surprisingly, Nijima also infiltrated his house, and even made a dozen spare keys. Nijima found information about two members of the Yami organization. One was Sho, and the other was Boris. While Boris was challenging other martial arts dojos, Apachai also came to Tanamoto's house to eat. Kanichi didn't want to go to school because he feared facing Mew. However, Apachai forced him to go to sleep. When he arrived at school, he thought Mew was angry with him, but she had actually prepared lunch for him. Meanwhile, Nijima was training the Shipaku gang to prepare them for conquering the world. Boris had found Ryozan Paku, so they invaded the dojo, unknowingly falling into traps set by the martial arts masters for Kanichi. Realizing that all of his subordinates were hospitalized, Boris challenged Ryozan Paku himself. As soon as he entered, he felt Saka Ki's hockey, but Shigu Ri destroyed his shoes, because entering the dojo required taking off shoes. At this point, he realized that everyone here seemed like monsters, but he was still determined to challenge them. They asked for a five-minute break to discuss something, wondering why the disciples of Yami were so brave. In contrast, their disciples are quite timid. When he finished his decision, when he was about to attack, Akisame immediately captured him for a tea conversation. Meanwhile, Kanichi, fearing that Sho would take Mew away from him, sneaked back to the dojo. Unexpectedly, as soon as he entered, he was attacked by him. So, Mew immediately stepped in to defend him, and got hit by him, making Kanichi furious. How dare you hit my Mew? Akisame thought Kanichi would lose control of his rationality, but he managed to control his killing intent. Suddenly, he rushed in to chokehold him. But Kanichi could still breathe using key breathing, and even lifted his body with just one hand. The martial arts master said that these were the results of his hard training. At this point, he realized Kanichi's strength, but he couldn't afford to lose either, as he had also trained rigorously with his own master. Although he saw Kanichi as nothing special, he couldn't defeat him. So, the two continued exchanging loving punches. Suddenly, someone called to say they wanted to meet Boris, and it turned out to be Sho, who ordered Boris to withdraw immediately causing him frustration, he said, next time, I will definitely defeat you, so, they immediately left, at this point, Saint Fist had arrived to confront Boris Sambo master, Sambo scolded him for ordering his disciple to challenge Ryozan Paku, Kanichi, promising to train hard, so, they immediately put him through a grueling training regimen, three months later, he was sure he would die, thus, Kanichi started thinking about how to escape again, the next day, Takeda felt that Kanichi was surpassing him, so, he asked Kanichi to help him join Ryozan Paku, are you crazy? It's dangerous there, like hell every day, but Mew and Kasara suggested he find a boxing master instead. While strolling through the street, Takeda coincidentally saw a man surrounded, not expecting his speed of striking to be very fast. So, Takeda decided to accept him as his master, however, he was rejected by the man. The next day, 
Akisame explained that the man, Shiba, was known as the destruction god in the boxing world, but he was also very ruthless, even Yami didn't want to cooperate with him. Takeda still insisted on accepting Shiba as his master. In the evening, Kanichi found Takeda kneeling there, having been doing so for two days. Shiba, however, still refused to accept Takeda. Kanichi offered to help him. When he learned that Takeda knew Akisame, he happily stepped out and took all their wallets to buy alcohol. Two days later, Shiba finally accepted Takeda as his disciple, but with a challenging test, he gave Takeda a wheel and instructed him to dive into the sea to find a sea snail and a starfish. It turned out Shiba just wanted to get rid of Takeda, giving him an impossible task. By evening, he actually managed to find it, but Shiba told him to give up, as Shiba had lost a leg and an eye on this path. He tried to discourage Takeda, witnessing Takeda's determination, Shiba agreed, and also told him about the Yami organization, they've already injured him like this. As soon as he entered the house, he saw a fighting arena. In the morning, Kanichi was forced to run, but still had to pay a monthly fee of 8,000 yen. Suddenly, Kanichi encountered Takeda, who was eager for a challenge. Meanwhile, the two masters teased each other, leading to a race between the two students. During the race, Kanichi was tripped by Shiba, who flaunted his winnings from the underground arena. Realizing the financial issues at the dojo, Kanichi proposed participating in underground fights to earn money. Unexpectedly, Kanichi was indeed taken there by Saka Ki. Suddenly, upon seeing Saka Ki, they all dodged away in fear. Even the arena's owner pleaded with him not to participate. At this moment, they see a girl competing, being a strong female wrestler. She easily defeated all her opponents. Saka Ki hopes that Kanichi won't encounter this girl. So, Kanichi was forced to fight against a bald-headed opponent. At this point, everyone thought Kanichi was too weak, because he always keeps avoiding confrontations. Suddenly, Kanichi starts counter-attacking, prompting both the audience and the girl to be surprised. Unexpectedly, the next opponent jumps into the arena, still using weapons, huh? While Saka Ki had placed all his bets on Kanichi, Kanichi immediately uses a combo move and defeats him. At this point, seeing Kanichi continuously winning, so, many people start taking notice of him. When this girl jumps into the challenge, Saka Ki immediately takes Kanichi away. But the entire arena wants Kanichi to fight, making Saka Ki uncomfortable. He immediately uses hockey, rendering the entire crowd unconscious. These two recognize that Kanichi is a disciple of Ryozan Paku. That evening, Kanichi is taken out to eat, and he realizes that Saka Ki brought him here just to train his courage. Winter arrives quickly. While Kanichi is practicing snowboarding, Tanamoto blames him again. Yami is still looking for you, and you're still playing around? Suddenly, Kanichi encounters a girl who has fallen. When they're not paying attention, Kanichi is immediately taken away by her, seeing him being taken up by the cable car. So, Mew immediately chases after. Both of them are taken to the mountain peak, seeing snow all around. This makes Mew remember her mother and feel frightened. So, Kanichi carries her to a nearby mansion. They are then allowed to stay in the prince's residence of the Taidic kingdom. Suddenly, they saw this girl here as well. Realizing that this is their trap, the principal is worried about Mew, because she suffers from a fear of snowstorms. The prince orders his subordinates to deal lightly with Kanichi. Mew realizes he is also a member of Yami. At this point, Mew is trying to resist, seeing Mew getting hurt. It made Kanichi angry, and he immediately attacked them, not caring about the prince. So, both of them escape and immediately run away. Tanamoto and Nijima are worried about Kanichi. So, they decide to go find him. Unexpectedly, the prince catches up with them. Kanichi recognizes that his martial arts are like that of a wild beast. Mew mentions that this martial art has caused trouble for her grandfather before. Suddenly, Mew is captured. So, Kanichi immediately disregards everything and pursues. Meanwhile, the prince is frustrated. How dare you ignore me? Luckily, Mew is safe, so, she drags Kanichi away. His master insists on capturing that kid at all costs. Mew faints again, so, he carries her back to the cable car station. Then Kanichi turns to confront them. Kanichi rushes forward to attack him, but he manages to block and counterattack Kanichi. Here, let me show you the difference between commoners and royalty. At this point, he continuously strikes Kanichi's joints, making Kanichi unaware of how he is being attacked because it's too fast. But Kanichi is determined to save Mew, unexpectedly. This time he manages to counterattack, leaving him puzzled about what Kanichi did. It turns out this is a technique Saka Ki taught Kanichi. 
Combining offense and defense equally with both hands, it's called the husband and wife fist technique. So, Kenichi charges forward again, this time he punches the guy's nose, making it bleed, but Kenichi still receives a kick from him, at this point, he ordered his henchmen to attack Kenichi as well, realizing that they intend harm to Mew. You dare touch a single hair on Mew. I am a king who cannot lose to someone like you. Taking advantage of Kenichi's distraction, he immediately flew up and tried to strangle him. Fortunately, Nijima and Tanamoto arrived just in time, so, they helped Kenichi stop his henchmen, while he continues to fight against him, thinking they've won. Unexpectedly, he drags Kenichi down the mountain. While Kenichi is unconscious, he intends to deal with him, but his master scolds him, calling him useless, and a loud shout creates an avalanche, putting both of them in a life-threatening situation. Fortunately, Tanamoto arrives driving a snowmobile. When Kenichi intends to take him along, he throws Kenichi onto the vehicle, because he doesn't accept Kenichi's pity. Finally, the whole group is safe. When they return home, Mew thanks Kenichi, but she accidentally hits his wound. The principal sees that Yami is too cruel. They even attack their own disciples. At this point, Sho gathers his gang together to continue searching for Kenichi. The next day, the principal planned a vacation on an island, the base of Yami, because they have invited them to participate in a martial arts competition. The video ends here for today. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to support Onichin in the next videos. Thank you for watching, much love.